Tetrahymena piriformis is a free-living ciliate protozoan species. Larger than most mammalian cells, they are commonly found in freshwater bodies and grow rapidly at room temperature. You may recognise them from one of your GCSE or A-level textbooks as they have several adaptations to help them survive. Tetrahymena are unicellular and eukaryotic. Notably, they have many hair-like projections known as cilia for motility. They also show nuclear dimorphism, which means they have a macronucleus for regular cell processes and a usually dormant micronucleus for the cell's germline. The tetrahymena also have a cell mouth, or cytopharynx, for ingesting foreign material into the cell in a process known as phagocytosis. All these features make tetrahymena a model organism for studying cytology and genetics in the lab. This video describes an experiment investigating phagocytosis in tetrahymena and how the process can be altered by drug intervention. Phagocytosis Phagocytosis is the cellular process of engulfing particles. It relies upon the cell's cytoskeleton, which consists of actin filaments, microtubules and intermediate filaments. These microfilaments can be polymerized or depolymerized depending on the cell's requirements. In tetrahymena, microtubules are polymerized with tubulin protein from the cell to move external protein into the cell's oral groove via phagocytosis. The protein can then be ingested through the cell membrane forming a food vesicle. Waste products can later be released from the cell via the process of exocytosis. There are various drugs which alter normal cytoskeleton structure. Colchicine inhibits microtubule polymerization, whilst Lutrunculin A inhibits actin polymerization. We can use these drugs to investigate phagocytosis and exocytosis in tetrahymena. The lab practical. The practical will require a sample of tetrahymena. A two to three day exponential culture grown in protease peptone media at room temperature is used to yield high cell counts. These cells should then be incubated in India ink for 30 minutes and suspended using the centrifuge. This means that any food vesicles formed in this period will be black. These dyed tetrahymena will then be subjected to four different solutions media or proteus peptone, colchicine in media, ethanol and latrunculin A or lat A in ethanol. 1.5 ml epinoff tubes should be labelled accordingly. It may be wise to work in groups and split the tubes between group members. To each tube add 0.5 ml of dyed cells. To the colchicine epindorf tube, add 10 microliters of colchicine. And to the media epindorf tube, add 10 microliters of media. Then, to the ethanol epindorf tube, add 1 microliter of ethanol. And to the lat A epindorf tube, add 1 microliter of lat A. The tubes can then be left to incubate on the bench for 10 minutes. Each tube should then receive 0.1 millilitres of carmine red dye. New vesicles formed in the cells should then be red. Three new epindorf tubes for each solution should then be prepared, labelled 10, 20 and 30 minutes. At each time point, 20 microliters of cells should be mixed with 10 microliters of glutaraldehyde to fix the cells. After they have settled, a milliliter of cells can be pipetted onto a glass slide. A cover slip should then be applied and the cells can be placed under the microscope. The results. Count the number of red and black vesicles in various cells. Then, recall the average number of each vesicle. Continue until you have a result for each time point. 
for every solution. Your results should look something like this. These results can then be plotted onto graphs. Firstly, we can examine the ethanol and media results. In both solutions, there is a clear increase in red vesicles over time and a decrease in black vesicles over the same time period. The LATS A results, however, do not show any significant decrease in black vesicles over the 30 minutes, but there is still an increase in red vesicles. Looking at the colchicine graph, there is a slight decrease in black vesicles, however there is no increase in red vesicles. Conclusion So what does this all mean? Well, the anola trunculin A inhibits actin polymerization. Since there is limited black vesicle removal, we can deduce that actin has a significant role in regular cellular exocytosis or ingestion. Colchicine inhibits microtribule polymerization. The slow decrease in black vesicles suggests that microtribules also play a role in exocytosis. Moreover, as there is no increase in red vesicles, microtribules must play an important role in phagocytosis. Questions for thought Which biological process did measuring the change in black vesicles show? What about the red vesicles? Why do you think tetrahymena need to ingest material from the cell? Colchicine is used to treat gout. You've seen that it alters cytoskeleton function in this experiment. Why do you think this is useful in patients with gout? What important cell processes might it alter? Thank you for watching.